quite go down far enough, did it? I can't see the bottom. So let's change our y min to say negative 15 and see if I can see the bottom of that curve. Yeah, now I can. So you see how you can just adjust it yourself so that you can see it. It didn't quite make, you know, I couldn't see the bottom of that parabola. So it just went down a little farther so I could actually see it. Or we could have hit zoom out. It would have done the same thing for us. All right. Let me go. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this cursor because I don't need it. So now I'm going to draw it. And I know it goes down here through negative 10. Um, it looks like it's somewhere between here and here-ish. So there's a, a decent picture of what we have. It's obviously not going to be perfect. So what are some things that you know about the roots? Just by looking at the picture and the equation. Two are imaginary. And two are not imaginary. Out of those two, what do we have? One positive, a real root, and one negative. Now, it could be rational or irrational. We don't know that. But I know this much. I know I have one positive and one negative, just based on where it crosses the x-axis. And since this number is a 4, I know I have to have two others out there. And since they're not shown on the picture, they have to be imaginary. Okay, so a list of rational roots. So possible rational roots. Plus or minus factors of 10, 1, 2, 5, and 10. Factors of 12, there's a lot of those. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. We are going to have a lot of possible rational roots. Okay. So plus or minus, 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, and no. Oh, I don't know why I did 5, sorry. Got carried away. So that's one over all the numbers. Now we do two. Two over one. Two over two is one, so I don't have to do that one again. Two thirds I do. Two fourths I don't. That's one half. Two sixths I don't. That's one third. Two twelfths I don't. That's one sixth. So yeah. Now five. Five over one. 5 over 2, 5 over 3, 5 over 4, 5 over 6, and 5 over Over one, ten over two is five, so we're good. Ten over three, ten over four is five over two, so we're good. Ten over six is five over three, so we're good. Ten over twelve is five over six, so we're good. So there's all of those. That's a lot.
So from this list, we're going to try to figure out which are the roots from above. Now again, we might not get it right, and if we don't, we'll just try some other ones. So looking at these, and then looking at these, and really it's probably better to look at the one on your calculator because it's definitely drawn more accurately. Uh, what do you think this one is? Based on the picture I see. If you had to guess. Negative one third. Okay. And what about this one? Two thirds. Okay. Sounds good to me. So let's try them. So we're going to say those are highly possible rational roots. And we picked a negative one third and two thirds. Which one do you want to divide by first? I don't know. Two thirds. Sounds good. So two thirds are down to 12. 19, 48, negative 29, negative 10. Had all the numbers. And if it doesn't give us zero, we're going to pick another one that's close to two thirds. Okay, so we divide by three. Three goes into 12 four times. Four times two is eight. And it was positive two thirds, right? And we add those, that's 27. 3 goes into 27 9 times. 9 times 2 is 18. Add those. 6. 3 goes into 66 22 times. 22 times 2 is 44. Three goes into 15 five times. Five times two is 10. Hallelujah. That one worked. So now the other one we thought was negative one third. So let's try that one. Three goes into 12 four times. Four times negative one is negative four. 23. 3 doesn't go into 23 evenly. Yeah. Uh, so that's negative 23 over 3. Oh man. 66 minus 23 over 3 is, oh, we got a calculator here. Not that easy. Minus 23 over 3. It was 175 over 3. And then divide that by that. That would be negative 175. Ah, that's definitely not going to give me zero. So, okay. Not that one. Let's get rid of this stuff. All right. So let's look back up here. What else is close to negative one third? Yeah, so let's do negative one fourth. What could be that? So I'm gonna get rid of this one. I'm gonna try negative one fourth. Yeah, it's totally understandable that we might have picked one third instead of negative one fourth. So let's see if this one works out better. 4 goes into 12 3 times, times negative 1 is negative 3, that's 24. 4 goes into 24 6 times, times negative 1, negative 6, that's 60. 4 goes into 60 15 times, times negative 1 is 15, yay! So we 
we divided by something with a degree of 4 twice. So again, it's a quadratic. That's what we needed. So now we take 12x squared plus 24x plus 12, not 12, plus 60. And set it equal to 0 and find the other two roots. What would you do first? Yeah, you know, let's factor out 12. So we got x squared plus 2x plus 5. Two numbers to multiply by 5, or 2, huh, multiply to give me 5, but add to give me 2. There's <laughs> not any. So what do we do? Yeah, you gotta do the quadratic formula. I don't have to worry about the 12, because 12 doesn't equal zero, so we're good there. So we're just solving x squared plus 2x plus 5. And remember, a is 1, b is 2, c is 5. It's just the numbers right in front of. So it's x equals negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2x. So we're just plugging those into that formula, going to get the answer. Well, two, actually. So x equals negative 2 plus or minus 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 5 all over 2 times 1. So all I did was replace a, b, and c with what a, b, and c are equal to. Oh. That's fine, we'll stop there. We'll finish that up. Friday, y'all. Have a good weekend. Just put your calculators up here on my desk.